social network um, that we have. So um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Pinterest, but it's essentially a, a pin board um, which you can stick or pin um, images that you, you sort of like or deem relevant to your, your Pinterest board. So it's again very, very visual in its approach and it's very, very quick because as soon as you see uh, an image on the website, you can pin it and immediately it goes onto your page. So you don't even really need to think about updates. It's just as you're browsing on you know, your daily chore through Google or your, your, your daily research, you can very quickly just pin an image and up it goes into your, into your pin board. So it can be quite a nice additional channel. It's a bit more engaging, it's visual, um, and because it's the fastest growing social network, you're going to be you know, speaking to new audiences and getting their attention through the, through the media that you're, you're, you're sort of pinning and drawing yourself or relying on yourself to. Does anybody have a Pinterest page? So check it out, it's, 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 it's very, very, as I say, visual, it's very, very new, but it's something that might add an extra dimension to your, to your communications as you move forward. Crowdsourcing um, is another new initiative, and um, so there are some fantastic examples of this. And you know, from a personal perspective, we do crowdsourcing every day. <clears throat> you might post on your Facebook or Twitter. Can anybody recommend a restaurant in London? Can anybody recommend a restaurant in Amsterdam? And people that you're friends with will provide solutions to your problems. So they might recommend a couple of different restaurants for you to try out, for example. But take that example into sort of a, an organisation's perspective and you can achieve some fantastic things through the power of having a large community. Coca-Cola um, in Asia Pacific completely bypassed their advertising agency by going out to their Facebook community and asking people to submit their idea of what the new poster, the new lead campaign would be in Asia Pacific. And through all of the images, the, you know, the independent photographers that sent in their images and recommendations, they had a brand new advertising concept which was free of charge. All they did was ask a question on Facebook about what their new campaign should look like in Asia Pacific. And you get all of these submissions, you get all of that engagement, all of that conversation, the PR articles it generates through asking one question. Um, and you've got a brand new advertising concept which might cost you a million dollars to, to, to produce through, through an agency. So that gives us a powerful example of how we can you know, solve problems um, and actually inspire our community to feed back to us and, and overcome our problems that we have every day. Um, Sanofi actually did this with um, their Diabetes Challenge and they basically gave a $100,000 reward for the most inspiring ideas within diabetes. And um, there was a few comments from you know, independent clinicians to say that the amount of the amount of information and the amount of ideas that were generated would take six to ten years to generate normally, but because of the power of the community, they got all of those ideas within six months. So it just shows the power. It's quite inspiring thought about how much we can get from the communities that we have. Um, World Hepatitis Day, to bring it back to, uh, to relevance. Um, in Australia, they are crowdsourcing what the names of the monkeys, the three monkeys, should be. So that's just quite a nice, quite obvious way of having something a bit fun posing a challenge or a problem or you know, creating a, a reward mechanism for people to get involved with the campaign. So something as simple as the name of the three monkeys is getting you know, traction and creating conversation online. The other key component about social is that it is by far and away the most trusted um, source of um, a sort of a medium. Um, so you look at things like online banner advertisements, which are actually trusted by only 33% of people, TV 62%, editorial content in a newspaper 69%, um, whereas the opinions posted online and recommendations from people I know come out as time and again the most trusted sources of, of information that you can receive. So that just goes to show that if you're trying to create advocacy and we're trying to influence people, social can be a really, really easy win in terms of having that trust. Um, and actually having things that are going to inform those opinions. Just some considerations, so content from social um, media platforms should be regularly updated, frequently updated, so that you maintain momentum. The obvious thing is that you go in with a brand new medium, like, like a social channel, and you update it every, every day, but then you sort of tail off, and then you need to update it maybe once a week, and then it's once a month, and the whole thing becomes, you know, it fails and sort of resigns to redundancy. That, that's the sort of typical pattern that a lot of people follow, but you need to, to maintain that engagement every day. The, the optimum thing is to tweet at least once a day, and the, um, there's been some research to show that 
you know, the optimum time to tweet is around six o'clock in the evening because people are coming back from home and they're checking their Twitter. So most of us will probably tweet it you know, in the morning because we just want to get rid of it and do an update for the sake of it. But actually, there's some really nice research to show that there are key times where you should tweet if you're going to tweet at all. I, I can also add to this that there um, already exist services that you can access for free, again, that can show you what are the um, optimal times to tweet. There are websites on which you can go and you can input some information. It will calculate when you can tweet, uh, when you can use the Facebook. There are websites that um, can prepare where you can upload all your content and you can say push this on Facebook at 6 o'clock, push this on Twitter at 8 o'clock, push this somewhere else at 9 o'clock and then you get all of your work done in one hour or half an hour and then all of your content for the day, for the couple of days or for the week is done. There are also websites which you can, um, online services which you can program in a way it's really, really, really easy and free that you can program in a way that, for example, if someone tweets something, it automatic, automatically picks up the tweet and sends it to Facebook or sends it to your email or vice versa. You get an email from someone and it sends it to Facebook. So just make sure you don't connect your private emails to your Twitter because that's going to be embarrassing, as we've seen in the US. Um, there are also services that you can use to monitor your Facebook and to monitor your Twitter, uh, to filter, for example, your, your Twitter. This is something I did a week ago when I uh, input our Twitter, the uh, Alpha Twitter. I put it in the filter, and the filter works in really, really easy. Several steps that you can filter all the people who are not following you, people who are not retweeting you, people whose accounts are dead. So basically you have numbers, but they're not doing anything for you. So you can always hang on to these people and just show the numbers to anyone interested and just, be, and just say, that, well, here, these are our successes, but actually from 1,600 followers, you only have 100 people who are actually active, and the other 1,500 got hit by lightning and they're not in the picture anymore. So you can always filter, you can always Devise the content better, and you can always reach your uh, peers in the best way. If anyone is interested in any of these tools, or would like, or is thinking of something that would be useful to 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 you and to your organization and to your communication channels, please do drop us a line and tell us. I'm thinking of something that I can do. Can I really do this? You don't know how to find them in Google. Send me an email, SMS, hopefully now at two, 2 o'clock in the morning. I will try to help you as best I can. Okay? Perfect, perfect. And uh, just on the sort of idea of free tools, I just wanted to give an example of something called TweetDeck. This is completely free. Um, and it just means you can capture so much information about what's happening on Twitter in one place on your desktop. So you can set up the columns it's, it's exactly as you need them, but um, essentially you could look at sort of the new followers that you have that are coming in, you could set up specific hashtags to monitor, so for example, on our tweet deck we've got see here, speak no, it's a hashtag so that we can see every single person that tweets to that hashtag and they populate with the columns, you could have hash hepatitis to see what generally the conversation is around the hepatitis um, hashtag, you can see, you can set up a column that, of all the people that are mentioning you, so you can get a very, where is this sort of basic sort of report, right? um, you know, basic in terms of you can only see what you've tweeted and what your followers uh, are sort of tweeting at any one moment. You can create a really bespoke monitoring tool so that you can see what specific conversations are taking place and therefore how you can you know, retweet content very quickly, how you can get involved with those conversations. So that's just a recommendation that if, you know, if, if Twitter's a priority for you, if you think it might be more of a priority for the back of today, then actually something like TweetDeck can be a really simple way. Um, if you've got a social media manager, if you if you yourselves are responsible for social media to, to you know, keep on top of it um, and actually to get it much more engaging and, and, and easy to use. So that's just a recommendation. Um, we were going to do some tweeting, but I think we're going to do that later in the day. Um, and that concludes the social media chapter. So I don't know if there's any questions or, or further queries from, from anyone. I'm, I'm uh, trying to use my good voice that um, I'm sure about what I'm going to ask there can be uh, three, four, five day seminars, workshops mm. but just if you can uh, give us an insight in brief 
um, let's say, generally speaking, Facebook communication yep. helps more if you want to achieve this. I mean, the assets of Facebook versus Twitter, if you can give just like a few ideas. Yeah, so there's quite a nice sort of spectrum of how social and how corporate different um, social media platforms are. So LinkedIn, very, very corporate. You don't really want to put fun stuff on, on LinkedIn. It's all about corporate, it's all about um, you know, engaging professionals um, in an educational way, in an inspiring way, in a thought leadership way. Um, and you kind of go through, so then Facebook is probably one of the, you know, more social, but it's not quite as, um, so Twitter before Facebook, so that Twitter is, again, quite business-led, it can be quite corporate, but equally it can be quite fun and engaging, whereas Facebook, if you go corporate on Facebook, people are just not going to be, that's not why people go on Facebook, you want it to be entirely fun, entirely engaging, very visual, so that's, a, I don't know if that's... So Twitter would be more corporate-ish than... Compared to Facebook, but not as much as they've been. So you, you do want inspiring content, but people are still going to follow you and listen to you if you've got more of a kind of corporate organisational message or you know, there is a financial message or whatever. But Facebook is entirely, you know, that's not why people are going on Facebook. So you do not want to be, you know, having any kind of content that really speaks to those those points. I, I, I think the biggest difference that you have to keep in mind uh, when differentiating between Twitter and Facebook is that Twitter is limited to 140 characters. So this is why people try to make their say as short and as firm as possible. So if you are, for example, here at Easel, and you saw something interesting, and you say something interesting, because you don't have the letters at Easel right now, 2013, this is happening. And this goes out as a tidal wave, because it reaches to your followers, they retweet. But there is no uh, like real interaction as you will have on Facebook. There are no comments and there are no trolls. There are just people who are retweeting. And people just hear about this. And you don't really know, for example, I tweeted this and 1,000 people heard about it. I don't know if these 1,000 people agree with me exactly. Did they come here to check it out? I don't know exactly what happened. You can always try and see with the statistics. And you can, if you follow them, you can sort of go into their own comments. But this will take you quite a, quite a while. And Facebook gives you the opportunity to um, connect with your followers a little bit more personally and they can give you um, a comment right away. And Facebook is always innovating and right now they did this change when uh, if you post something, some idea for example, and people start commenting, the comments with the most likes, I think, get separated from the other ones. And they get in into like a cluster because before if you get one idea and 1,000 comments, you would have to press a button and open all of the 1,000 comments to find one which is a good comment. And right now, these all pop out. Question? I, I know you have preference for Facebook, but then I think that Twitter really gives you a chance to make your point clear. Um, I know your preference for Facebook. I don't have a preference for Facebook. <laughs> Okay, uh, my point is that I think it's important to, to integrate both channels because yes, Facebook gives you the opportunity to discuss more with people, but also people get lost with one comment. They start talking about hepatitis and they end up talking about where we're going to have coffee. So I think Twitter also gives you the opportunity to make a clear statement and then just have followers who are going to follow it for the sake of it. This is, um this is actually why you can also connect your Facebook to your Twitter. And you can have the things that you post on Facebook, they can be posted directly to Twitter. So you can get attention from both mediums. And this is why we talked about multi-channeling. I'm not only about Facebook. I got on Facebook because I had to go on Facebook. I didn't go by my own will. But this is my general perception. Twitter is great for uh, reaching out to many people at once in a second. So if something really important happens, it's better to use Twitter, not Facebook. And if you want to uh, put something that is going to last a little bit longer, like a photo or a video or anything like this, it would be best to have it also on Facebook, but not only on Twitter, because it might get lost on Twitter. You can't. I want you. In Belgium, the most people, uh, they have hepatitis. They are 
between the 50 and the 70, I, I, I ask the, the, the Twitter now and Facebook maybe, but we, we, we don't have young people with hepatitis, drug users, but they, 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 they work, uh, don't work with the uh, uh, computer. And I'd like to say that uh, uh, I prefer more Facebook because it um, depends uh, which country what more using one of the biggest problems. My country using more of 90% uh, of the people Facebook and 20% uh, Twitter. And more easier for some countries to use Facebook. Maybe uh, Twitter has better performance for using, but it depends what, uh, what do you like, what is your proposal? My name is Dima, I'm from Ukraine. We have uh, the same problem. Uh, we have uh, access to, inter to the internet uh, of 20% of people in Kyiv, it's the capital of Ukraine, and 12 or 14% in the other regions. Uh, we use uh, all these instruments, what you said, for communication with journalists. The TV is a most uh, channel for communication with people in our country. And uh, we use this instrument to connection with uh, journalists. And that's really something because um, in, the, in the UK, um, almost all, well, like almost all national journalists are on Twitter, so to engage with them, not only via a traditional press release mechanic, but also to engage their interest or people their interest via Twitter is, is key for us. But you know, to the, the other gentleman's point, um, different countries have different preferences themselves. So it's hard to this is just a, you know, a principle, it's a, it's a best fit um, presentation, but um, totally in terms of you know, the, the preference for different channels will completely vary. So if, you know, in France, I believe, um, Twitter is, is more prominent than Facebook. Whereas you know it's the opposite in, in your region, so that will completely bias your channel planning in terms of the types of content you want to push out by the most prominent channels. Hi, in Portugal uh, is Facebook too, and I have the the page for the, the association, and the people see the, the post, but but uh, don't um, comment. I, I post in the page of uh, SOS and my page. And my page, I have uh, 4,000 uh, uh, friends. Yeah. And 90% is um, patients. And uh, they <coughs> like, uh, comment, but in my page, not the page of uh, SOS because we have um, many the discrimination. The, we are the people very con conservative. Uh, yes, conservative. Um, we don't tell, I have, uh, I, no. They see, but they not comment, not like, not uh, nothing. In my page, maybe, but in the, the association, no, yeah. not yet. And that, that's kind of, I guess we've got a similar position in the UK, and I think that's probably representative globally, so people don't really want to talk about hepatitis, particularly, um, same with the media. Um, so that's why we did a monkey campaign, yeah. because monkeys are funny, they're, yeah, everybody's, everybody recognises these gestures, and it's not specifically about hepatitis, it's kind of everybody can get involved with it, but by the way, there's all this messaging around hepatitis as well. So that's exactly why we wanted to do something which at the forefront was compelling and fun to some degree, um, to capture, you know, the wider the net in terms of the people that we could actually speak to. So it might be that you want, might want to you know, change the type of approach and see, you know, do a bit of testing, you know, if you do something like quite visual or if you talk about our campaign, then does that get suddenly a lot more commentary and a lot more involvement rather than, you know, the more tried and trusted news or whatever it is specifically about hepatitis. So you can kind of chip and change a little bit to see which approaches work the best, but certainly that's what led us to 
that's something a bit different in terms of our approach. Now, I must say, it's just terrible, you know, it's a storm in here. And it's not only that it's cold, you know, my tinnitus gets worse, my eyes get worse. It's terrible. I'm saying my hair is moving. <laughs> you know, is there nothing we can do, you know? I'm really sorry about this, but it, it's the same issue like le uh, exactly. last night. It's central heating. But why don't they put the whole building down? Nobody wants it. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can. You know what? You can tweet about this to Easel and ask them. I'm at Easel freezing. It's yeah. 20 degrees outside and I'm freezing inside. Actually, if you do this, we can make this small. And we are sitting here for six hours, you know. If it was a quarter of an hour, I wouldn't say anything. We can make this small exercise. Tweet this, we'll all retweet this, and if they turn down the heat, there you go. Policy action in action. So, just to wrap up, uh, no one is forcing anyone to use just Facebook, just Twitter, just something else. You are the ones who are working in your regions, in your fields, and you know your peers, you know the people, you know the patients. It, it, it was a great comment that you mentioned that uh, patients are actually seniors and they don't always have access to internet and some people don't even know what internet is. Maybe it's something to eat or I don't know what. But um, again, you, you need to know the people that you work with and you need to invest and put efforts into finding the best way to communicate with them. In the West, it is a little bit more easier to connect with people through, um, uh, through Twitter, but for example, in Bulgaria as well, Twitter is widely used, but it's not as popular as, for example, in, in France, because not everyone in Bulgaria still has smartphone devices, for example. And this is the same thing uh, which is happening in Eastern Europe, and I'm sure Ukraine, Lithuania, you guys can, um, confirm this. Not everyone has access to mobile devices and computers, so not everyone can tweet on their way to, to, to work. Most people can Facebook or they can access a website, but you know your people and you should build your content. Just one top sort of hint and trick um, just to sort of leave you with for those of you with Facebook pages. Um, if you've got a Facebook post that you particularly want people to see, say if you've got 500 followers, you would quite like all 500 of them to see it. What's tended to happen previously is that you post something and then it drops down through people's timeline over the course of the day. So the later on that somebody logs on, the less likely they are to see it because it will be further down the news. What Facebook's just introduced is the option to promote your tweet. So if you really want all of your 500 people to see it, you can it and it costs about ten dollars um, but if you really want to make sure that your entire audience on Facebook that follow you see that post then just press promote and be willing to you know pay the ten dollars whatever it is and it will guarantee that everybody that you follow sees that post so that's just a new function that they've got if you've got some particularly key content uh, so I think this is the final digital chapter but we just touched on traditional media and that's um, online analytics um, so what do we mean by that? It's to actually measure and actually analyse the content of our websites and our social channels. So if we've got a website of five pages, then we can see which pages are most popular, what is the content that people are looking at, what are they doing with that content um, afterwards. So it starts to just refine the process of, of actually managing the communications materials that we're putting out there. So if we've got a video um, and we can see that everybody that hits the website is viewing the video, then let's do some more video. You know, it gives us that opportunity to say this is working really well, so let's do more of it. This isn't working very well, so let's let's scrap it. Let's not focus our resource, let's not focus our budget on the stuff that's not working, let's deal with the stuff that is, which is quite basic, but you look at some of the stats and people don't use Google Analytics, they don't use you know, the YouTube analytics we looked at, whereas they're, they're providing such fantastic insights to be able to, to provide for your content. Just got a quick video um, which basically highlights this kind of um, notion that you should never really miss an opportunity to you know, highlight your messaging, you should never miss an opportunity to sell, whereas a lot of websites are built in a way that they just miss and miss and miss those opportunities. Hey, just like this. Pretty sure. Uh, yeah.
Isn't it? Uh, they can. Yeah. And then 1983, yeah. I uh, Zani Pops. Sorry. <coughs> Zani Pops? No, okay. Don't worry about that. What's your postcode? Oh, it's uh, GU749ZT. Welcome back, Nick, forever. Oh, okay. Please listen carefully to spread light and screen before continuing your post to the local bread. If you do not, you will have to have You will simply not use any bread based product for any purposes of the debate, as you including without limitation design, but the manufacture of missiles, chemical need or biological weapons. I'm afraid you've timed out. What? So Hello? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Hey. Just what that, sir? Yeah, we just what's your username? Mm -hmm. It's Nick Forever dot number four or other. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna check that you're a real person. Could you say that? That's not even more than how about this one? You know what forget it. This one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cotton ice. You're in. Great. I'm in. 885. It's supposed to be my right hand. Sussex so was delivery. What's that? Oh it's express delivery. Oh, so <laughs> Why? Bread insurance. You didn't untake the David Line bread insurance option. No, I think I'll risk it. It is quite close to the sell by date. Don't care. 98 pence it is. If you want to pop back in five business days, you'll be ready for your collection. Well, well I need it now, obviously. Oh, okay, no, you want the take home today price, the last two pounds and seven. You know what, I'm going to go. Come back soon. So just a, an observation in terms of how a lot of websites are set up with an extremely tricky customer interface. Um, the basic ethos of online measurement is what gets measured gets managed. Obviously you want to manage that, so let's look at some of the tools that are going to empower you to be able to do so. Um, a staggering 46% of all organisations don't have any kind of measurement for their online tools. So whether it be social, whether it be websites, whether it be video content, whatever it is, they don't have any kind of insight into terms of how, how that's being um, picked up, how it's being received. Um, the reasons for that, 18% couldn't see the value, 50% said they lacked the necessary knowledge. So given that this is such a simple thing to be able to do, then it gives us the power to be able to actually start to monitor the measure. Just a little bit of back, um, back context with regards to what um, analytics is. So first and foremost, it's the reach. Um, this is the most basic level of, of measuring the, the performance of your, your content and your tools. So in terms of how many people you're following, how, how many people are visiting your website, how many fans have you got, how many subscribers, things like that. So it's quite a basic measurement to be able to say that I've got 20,000 visitors to my website and I've got 5,000 people viewing my video on YouTube. Just gives you an idea of the scale of people that you're trying to be, that you've got as a captive audience. Second level beyond that, so that's the basic, the next level is involvement. So out of all of those people, how many pages have they visited in the website? Have they just gone straight from the home page to just leave your website instantly? Or have they actually got involved with lots of the pages and a lot of the content? And that's what's called the bounce rate. So you want to minimise your bounce rate because it means people have logged onto your home page and gone off straight away into another website. You've lost them. Whereas you want them to go through the page through the website and through hopefully quite a specific journey. So that, that shows you how involved they've been. From a sort of comments perspective, you could put a metric in place in terms of for every thousand views of the video, how many people have commented on it. So that gives you an idea as to the level of involvement of the people that you've reached. After involvement, and this is the gold standard, this is what everybody should be aiming for when they're analysing and, um, and evaluating their content, and that's advocacy. So therefore, out of all of the people you've reached and got involved with the um, content, how many actual advocates, how many positive feedbacks have you got? Who's actually sharing your content and retweeting it, which is quite a basic thing to do, but it shows that people have thought this is good content and I'm going to share it with my followers as well. So this is really the kind of key, um, the key area.